There is a man that I'm pretty sure that this is the first time you've ever heard of him. This man was born in Mexico and he is the one behind thousands of tons of precursors used by both the Sinaloa Cartel and the Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación to make hundreds of thousands of synthetic drugs. This man is also responsible for the expansion of both cartels all over the world to places like India, Africa, Europe, and Asia. This is a man that has ma who has managed to keep under the radar. And when we think about the Sinaloa cartel leadership or expansion, we mostly think of people like El Chapo Guzman or El Mayo Zambada. When we talk about the uh, Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación, we tend to think about El Mencho. But the real mastermind behind both of them, the one making the big bucks and the one laundering all that money and actually enjoying it, is a man who was born in Jalisco but lives now in Dubai. His name is Hassin Eduardo Figueroa Gomez. He also goes by Eduardo Figueroa, Eduardo Gomez, or Hassin Edward. He, as I was telling you, was born in Jalisco and he started in the business with his dad, a man named Ezio Benjamin Figueroa Vasquez. He was arrested in 2011 for supplying hundreds of tons of precursors to both cartels, first to the Sinaloa cartel and then the Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación. Ezio and Hassin Figueroa, both of them, they set up a bunch of small pharma companies in South Africa. These companies were operating as regular pharmaceutical companies, shipping hundreds of tons of medicine and precursors to legal uh, businesses in Europe, Africa, and Mexico. But in reality, what they were doing is that they were selling shit tons of precursors to the Mexican drug cartels. Um, they also, after growing the operations and establishing and making a facade of being like established small pharma company out of South, South Afri Africa, they eventually expanded to places like Israel, Syria, and China to keep supplying both cartels. So when we talk about the links between the Sinaloa cartel and the Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación with Chinese government officials, with Chinese companies, is very probable that Hassin Eduardo Figueroa is at the middle of these negotiations through his pharma companies. I think that it's really amazing and it, it really blows my mind is that many of his companies although have been flagged by the U.S. Department of Treasury at some point, and his dad has been arrested in Mexico, and um, he's behind bars and they froze all of his, his accounts, he still has a shit ton of companies operating freely. This is really mind-blowing, because it means that his empire is still growing, although there is people in the government that knows about him, that knows about what he does. He has businesses in Mexico like Desarrollos Inmobiliarios Citadel, Desarrollos Turísticos Fortia, 
Squadra Fortia, Unión Abarroteros de Jalisco, which is basically the guys supplying most of the um, local stores like Oxos and all these corner stores from um, fruit and um, vegetables and other um, stuff. El Palomar Car Wash, uh, Fortia Baja Sur, operating out of uh, Baja California Sur, Geo Pharma, operating in Mexico City, Grupo Comercial San Blas, Grupo FIF, Medical International de Equipos, who um, are basically selling medical equipment to places like Mexico, the US, and Europe. Um, he also has Promociones Citadel, Punto Farmacéutico, Desarrollo Arquitectónico Fortia. Um, he owns at least three different passports, um, stating different dates of birth, different passport numbers, different countries of origin. Um, most of his passports, though, uh, put him as having been born in 1973 in Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. He changes the exact date, like in some of the passports, um, he shows has been born um, in the uh, May uh, 10th or May 11th or May 20th. So um, I'm pretty sure that he was born around May, but he al always has the same um, year, which is 1973. And this could be um, to actually make it credible and to uh, be assured that he's not going to make a mistake at any ar airport he travels because um, sources say that of course he's traveling a lot he's going a lot from Dubai he's been recently very active in Africa not only South Africa but places like Burkina Faso Mauritania places that are not really common to uh, for like a Mexican pharmaceutical um, businessman to be very present but he also travels a lot to Syria so that means he enters acts as a regular Mexican businessman um, this figure at least to me is a very interesting one because it he could be holding the keys to all the uh, links and the um, works in between the Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generaciones recent operations in Africa, but also the Sinaloa cartel link to the Chinese government shipping hundreds of thousands of fentanyl pills um, to the US. So I think this is a man that is not only the, 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 the um, El Chapo and El Mencho brought together he's the brain of both of them he's the brain of both of the uh, most powerful drug cartels in the world uh, but he also is behind this fentanyl epidemic in the u.s um, and it's weird that his operations are still booming and most of his businesses that I at least the ones that I found out of Cancun, Jalisco, Mexico City, Chihuahua are still operating freely and many of them under the name of um, some older family members but very directly linked to him. Um, so I don't know guys I mean there is a high possibility that this guy is operating along with a government and not talking only like could be the Chinese government could even be the um, CIA in the US because the level of protection that this guy has to keep operating like that and to be moving around two of the most powerful drug cartels and several countries facing a lot of a recent violence, um, political violence, government and stabilization. I mean, he has his um, hands around some of those um, sketchy countries. So that is that. And that is um, taking me to the next thing, which is how in two years the Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación has been growing its operations in Africa. This was the dream or the goal 
for El Chapo Guzman. He tried several times to operate in South Africa, to open that market and to establish operations in that um, region, in that continent, to no avail. He never got really to step over the local African and Chinese mafia that operate currently in that country. Um, he couldn't get around the culture. He couldn't get around um, actually stepping over the um, local corrupt authorities. And by the time he was arrested, his plans um, plummeted. No, El Mayo apparently didn't really follow up. He just followed up uh, for what I know. He followed up with some local mafias um, to keep... Uh, the African contact as a way to reach Europe, but basically paying them to operate in that region. But the Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación in two years managed to control not only the region, it's most of its air airports, highways, but also to get a hold of the African mafias and the Chinese mafias operating in Africa. Um, for what I know, this was uh, only made possible. Allegedly, most of my U.S. government sources say that El Mencho is behind breaking these deals and that his um, capability of actually seeing a growing business was um, the um, different factor to make this deal possible, to make possible to, to Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación step foot in Africa in a way that the Sinaloa Cartel was never able to. But again, the uh, sources talking about Hassin Eduardo Figueroa, they say that it wasn't really the um, powerful mind of El Mencho, but it was Hassin Eduardo seeing how the Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación started coming up in Mexico and internationally, and the Sinaloa Cartel sort of like losing grip and splintering into different families and groups and having a lot of infights. So he rather helped the Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación to have a stronghold in Africa instead of the Sinaloa cartel. The information that I have is that within two years, the Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación has managed to transform a lot of different countries inside Africa as proxy countries to ship drugs into um, Europe. And apparently what is also happening there is that Africa has becoming now the center of operations, of international operations for the Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación. What does this mean? It means that that's the region from where they're getting a lot of their firearm power. That's a region where they're training a bunch of the, its soldiers. Um, that's the region where they are having high-level meetings between the Cartel Jalisco um, top leadership and leaders uh, from places like Colombia and Ecuador, um, but also Brazil, Europe, Chinese mafias or triads. Um, so Africa has become now the center of international operations for this cartel, and at the same time, Africa holds a really interesting key for revenue for all of these cartels or mafias. But before jumping into that, there is something interesting. Um, they are using very specific countries inside Africa, obviously because of the proximity to um, seaports or to um, certain um, highways that get all the way up to the um, north and to Europe, but they've been using specifically Guinea-Bissau. Guinea-Bissau is a very small country, very um, 
problematic country inside Africa, not really in the radar for anything major uh, or any like recent huge development, but a country that has a lot of infrastructure, it has good airports, good highways, good hospitals, but its institutions are weak and corrupt, maybe even more than the Mexican or most Latin American institutions. So that's why they've been using Guinea-Bissau as um, one of the main places to establish international operations. Most of the drugs, though, are coming in by Mauritania, Togo, and Burkina Faso. As uh, you might know, or if you have a look at those countries, they've been having international issues for a while. They are always at the verge of um, political instability, of high crime rates. It's a very impoverished um, country in Africa. And I think uh, the Cartel Jalisco, learning from its own operations through Latin America with different countries with the same or similar issues, that's all the learning they brought to Africa that didn't do, that the Sinaloa cartel didn't do, basically. So these guys said, okay, we have this well infrastructure, weak institutions, high corruption, impoverished people, huge country, and right next to one of the biggest drug markets in the world, which is Europe, but also right next to one of the biggest suppliers of precursors to make drugs in the world, which is China. If you really think about it, this is a very smart move, a very dangerous move for us living with the consequences of the power of what the Carta Jalisco Nueva Generación has been reaching. This cartel is growing to a place that it's gonna be almost impossible to stop it because you will have to stop this well-oiled international criminal organization that now has to do not only with Mexico, but it has to do with African mafias, Chinese mafias, and with people like Hassin Eduardo. Hassin Eduardo, and I'm gonna show you, Hassin Eduardo recently bought this huge penthouse in Dubai. And it's worth over $2 million. According to sources, this is where he currently lives. This is in one of the most elite towers in Dubai. He has all amenities. This, what you're watching right here, is the full area size for the uh, penthouse. And he's using this not only to leave or to establish himself in a country where he owns a lot about a lot of the uh, political institutions, but also to launder money. He's he, he's um, owner of several of these penthouse. Um, the one that got my attention is that one because that's the penthouse where he allegedly lives and stays for the most part. And I think it, that really says about. Um, the um, international connection to international power that Hassin Eduardo Figueroa Gomez has, a dude from Jalisco. And so my thought in here is that how many other like real bosses, right? They're not business owners. They're not selling weapons. He's literally dealing with precursors, drugs, drug money for these two organizations. Um, some of the sources inside the Sinaloa cartel, although they 
pointed at a Colombian contact, uh, they always point at this Mexican guy that they really didn't know if he was working for the Cartel Jalisco. He was like a shady, you know, like strange uh, figure, businessman that only dealt with uh, the um, top of the top of the of the cartel. But apparently he was the one holding the keys to most of the precursors. The other people, the other sources inside the Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación, they say that he's not only in charge of that, but he also is the link who makes the introductions to all of these um, Chinese chemists. And that he's lately is that he's trying to set up a bunch or he's not trying because apparently he doesn't really own the kitchens or he doesn't really own the precursors. And I guess that's why he's so sneaky because he's, he's not the owner. Like he's not like a mancho who owns a group of soldiers and owns like basically the drug. Um, this guy is even above that. He's the broker. He's the one making money. He's the one telling El Mancho or telling El Mayo or telling whoever these bosses of the cartels are. He's telling them, do you want to establish operations in Syria? It's a place really out of reach from the U.S. It's a place highly corrupted. It's a place where you can also trade some of these drugs for super cheap and super powerful firepower. Um, and if uh, one of these cartels said yes, as I was recently told that they were looking into Syria to start um, like clandestine kitchens, um, then he can make it happen. He's your guy to actually make it happen. What do you do with all that money coming from Europe, which is hundreds of thousands of money? millions maybe even billions if you're talking about like the whole um company Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación what do you make with all that money well you call someone like Hassin Eduardo Figueroa to learn that money and what he's gonna start doing is that he's gonna get a nice two million penthouse in Dubai to launder some money through it or several uh penthouses there He's going to put money into his Desarrollos Turísticos in Cancun. He's going to put money to his car washes. He's going to put money in um, the operations he has in Chihuahua. And after a couple of years, you're going to have that shit tons of money to enjoy freely in your country. Um, many of the... Um, businesses under his name are either clients or suppliers for companies that have been flagged as being owned by Los Valencia cartel, which is the financial structure or financial criminal structure behind the Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación. So I guess it all stays in the family, but I'm going to leave you with one final thought is whenever we talk about drug buses, about drug lords, about people like El Mencho, about El Mayo Zambada, I think we are missing these known unknowns like Hussein Eduardo Figueroa, whose name is in hundreds of files of the U.S. government, but his name is barely making it to the news. His name is barely being said in Mexican news outlets, let alone U.S. news outlets. If you've ever heard about Hassin Eduardo Figueroa before, it's because I'm pretty sure that you've dig, that you've stumbled upon an article and wonder who the shit is this individual? But if, you, if all you get is news from most regular news outlets, you're going to get stuck with names as El Mayo, as El Mencho. But behind them, 
is one guy banking, making the money, living the life freely and openly in the world and very probably breaking deals with a lot of governments all over the world. So I'm going to stop right here. This is uh, this, this was a short episode since I didn't really have the time to open um, the um, Q&A stickers on Instagram as I usually do. And I'm going to try to do that for the next weekly debrief again. Um, I was uh, 40 hours driving from El Paso to New York following uh, migrant uh, 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 migrant bus. It's basically a government-sponsored bus full of uh, Venezuelan migrants taking um, that have that that are taking right now, being transferred, transported to New York or Chicago or Washington. It was very enlightening. I'm gonna put out that story as soon as I can. I need to get to write a lot, um, but that's why I, I really slept. Uh, if I say four hours during my whole trip. I'm, I'm saying maybe that's a lot. So I didn't really have the time to open the uh, Q&A session on Instagram. Uh, if you only follow me here on YouTube, go to follow me on my Instagram um, as at Luis Kuriaki. I'm gonna uh, leave my um, contact for Instagram right here in the description of this episode. And follow me over there. And every week I open up this Q&A sticker where I, um, I'm open for questions. And I usually answer most of your questions on my YouTube channel on, by the end of the uh, weekly debrief. Now remember that if you're finding this information valuable, the uh, best way to support me is to like, subscribe, and share my videos so more more people reach out um, and subscribe to my channel. Um, but also, I have this thing called buy me a coffee or buy me a beer, where you can either buy me a coffee or buy me a beer, and that's been very helpful to me, guys. As you have no idea, because I have a lot of like small expenses to keep producing these. Um, weekly debrief, but also to keep uh, myself like in the metrics of saying, okay, um, what I'm doing is actually useful. So I really appreciate you guys for, for being here. Leave me a comment. I really want to know if this format is working, if I'm getting better at the visuals and at the um, audio and settings, um, but also to know if I'm hitting the right spot when it comes to information. Thanks a lot, guys, and see you guys soon on the next Weekly Debrief.